fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. phantom figure of the plains was the most daring character ever to ride in the cause of justice during the days of the early western United States. He fought crime without thought of danger. He brought law and order to a country where the standard of right was might. And now, another thrilling adventure comes to life. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, silver old fellow. Oil has been found in Texas and there's trouble ahead. Let's have those red legs of yours. Vast fortunes were made in the new Texas oil fields. Ranch owners and farmers both turned their attention to the new wealth that lay beneath the surface of the earth. Boom towns rapidly arose. And in one of these... Cal Godfrey started his Wishbone Cafe. The newly rich, eager to spend their fortunes, provided him with a thriving business. Every night, a crowd jammed the place to celebrate, and Cal was the moving spirit behind the festivities. Order up, boys. The next round's on the house. You two strangers, come on, step right up here and get that sour look off your face. What would it be? Nothing. We're here on business. Business? <laughs> You can't do business after sundown. Listen to that, boys. They come to the wishbone on business. (laughs) We're looking for a man named Gregory. You ain't talking about Stonewall Gregory, are you? The name we have is Martin Gregory. That's Stonewall. Box G Ranch. (laughs) Maybe you're oil men from the east. You guessed it. We're from Pennsylvania. Well, take my advice and stick around the cafe where it's safe. Stonewall can smell an oil man a mile away. And if any of them comes too close, he takes down his shooting irons. What does he have against oil men? Claims they've ruined the country. Stonewall breeds the best horses in the state. He's got the best ranch hereabouts. And he swears that nobody's going to turn it into a sinkhole. You ain't got a chance of wangling a lease out of Stonewall. He's plain ornery when it comes to oil. We'll take our chances on that. How do we get to the ranch? Oh, it's a close ten miles. Better wait till morning and... Never mind the advice. Just give us the directions. I'll fix you up with a guide. Hey, Injun. Uh, You've been loafing around here long enough. These gents got a job for you. What job? You know where the Box G Ranch is? Uh, then borrow yourself a horse and show them the way. Um, me, Joe. Good. Come on, George. I warn you, Stonewall won't even let you get close to the place. We'll take our chances. Lead the way, Indian. For 20 years, Stonewall Gregory had struggled to increase his land holdings. 
Year after year, he had added to his property until at last he owned close to a thousand acres. We see him now in the living room of his home, speaking to his wife, Martha. It's my land, Martha, and it's going to stay the way the Lord made it. Folks call me Stonewall. That's because you're so stubborn. I ain't stubborn. I'm just standing up for my rights. And the next palavering oil man that comes sneaking around here is going to get filled full of lead. You don't mean that. I'll show you. Well, I suppose there ain't no use in reasoning with you. Once you get your mind set on something, you're just like a mule. I'm standing up for my rights. All I say is you could raise just as good horses up north away. And with all that money you'd get from the oil leases, you could buy twice as much land. Maybe so. But I couldn't buy it as good. What makes my coal sell for such high prices? It ain't because you're smart. I never saw a man with such a poor head for figures. I'm a horseman. I ain't no bookkeeper. Go on, answer my question. What makes my coal sell so high? Well, they come a good stock. Ain't it natural they should take after their sires and mares? Sure. But there's something else, Martha. There's something in the grass here that just makes the coal grow fast and get strong. This grazing land's the best there is in the whole southwest. How about the North Hundred? The grass is mighty poor up there. You got an offer for that parcel from the Meredith Company. I told you to burn that letter. I did burn it. But you got to admit that land ain't no good at all. I won't admit nothing. There's a fine creek run through it. There's better water to the south. Then why do the coasts and the mares run up there every day? They run for the sake of running, not for the sake of water. I've seen them when they didn't touch a drop. Just splash around a little and then go racing back to the good grassland. There's something special about that creek. And I ain't selling the land to nobody. All right. Ain't no law says I gotta do it. Ain't no law says a man can't show good sense, neither. Hey, where's my gun? There's somebody outside. Oh, it can't be oil men this time of night. Never can tell. Now be careful, Stonewall. Don't go shooting at any of our neighbors. Well, what's the matter, Prince? Oh, there's three men are riding up. Oh, yeah, one's an engine. Oh, this place. Who are you and what do you want? Call your dogs out, Gregory. We're here to talk business. You can state your business from where you are. The company I represent wrote you a letter about a month ago. So you're an oil man, huh? Now, Pa, don't go loco. We want to lease your north hundred acres. I ain't going to lease one square inch of my ranch. And if you three don't get away from here before I count ten, I'll fill you full of buckshot. Be reasonable, Mr. Gregory. That north hundred isn't any use to you. It's got the best water in the world on it. I ain't selling, I ain't leasing, and I'm starting to count. One, two... Three, we'll give you ten thousand dollars for it. Five, Did you hear that? Six, ten thousand dollars for a lease. Eight, nine, ten. No, you don't. Eight. What'd you push my gun up for, Marcy? Because these strangers ain't hurt you none. Let me go. They're oil men, and they're trespassing on my property. Well, you'd best get out of here before he reloads, Jen. We're going, ma'am, but we'll be back. I'll use bullets instead of upshot next time. Put one foot on my land, and you're as good as dead. Land sakes, what a man. They come riding up to the door wanting to give you $10,000 and I yet. meant what I said. The next oil man that comes sneaking around here gets shot on sight. It was Tonto, the Lone Ranger's faithful Indian companion, who had led the two Easterners to the ranch. As the oil men returned to town, Tonto followed them, overhearing a portion of their conversation. When he reached the masked man's camp later that night, he repeated the events of the evening. What do the Easterners plan to do now? In one, two day, them try again. I'm afraid they won't succeed. It's too bad, Tonto. That north hundred acres of Stonewall's property isn't any good to him. Him say water good. There's nothing exceptional about it. Him say yes. He's trying to justify his attitude. There's better water and much more of it in the southern section. Stonewall will be sorry that he's turned down this offer. Mm. I rode over his ranch today. The buildings need repairs. Mm, that right. He probably intends to fix them up when the cattlemen start buying horses in the fall. After roundup, huh? What Stonewall doesn't realize is this. And the cattlemen will be putting their extra cash into oil land this year. Stonewall isn't going to sell half as many colts as he used to. Mm, that right. It'll be a hard winter for the old man. I wish there was some way we could persuade him to give those Easterners a lease on his land. Mm, them crooks. Crooks? Me hear them talk. You mean that they're trying to swindle Stonewall? Ah, uh, them crooks. They represent a big company, Tonto. I don't believe there's anything wrong with their offer. Them get lease, not pay. Them keep 
money. So that's it. I wonder how they'll try to work it. Me not know that. Well, it's a good thing that Stonewall drove them away from that. I'll have a talk with them before they try to see him again. The following afternoon, the two Easterners, Bentley and Shane, rode along the boundary of Stonewall Gregory's North 100 Acres. We hear them discussing their plans. If we pull that scheme, we'll both lose our jobs. You're crazy. I can work it so as we'll have absolute proof that Gregory was paid. He won't even talk to us, though. These Westerners shoot first and discuss a thing afterwards. Hey, there's a rider coming toward us. It isn't Gregory, is it? No. Look at that horse travel. I've never seen such speed. The rider's mask, Bentley. Come on, we'd better turn back to town. We can't get away from him. He must be an outlaw. What of it? All our money's locked up at the hotel. When he finds that out, he'll shoot us. Who, who, who? who? Bentley! Don't be a fool. If he's out for money, we'll promise to give him plenty as soon as we get back to town. I'll handle it. Keep quiet. Oh, 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 so much. Oh, boy. Hello. That's a fine horse you got there. Yes. Oh, listen, mister, we don't have any money. We don't have a penny on us now. But if you let us ride back to town... Shut up. And... I don't want any money. You're an outlaw, aren't you? Some people think I am. Oh, we're just a couple of poor prospectors. We're new to this country. I know who you are. You represent one of the biggest oil companies in the East. No, that's wrong. You've got it wrong, Mr. The Rick. Indian who guided you to Gregory's ranch last night is my friend. He told me everything that happened. Well, what do you want? I may be able to help you. What do you mean? You'd like to get a lease on this property. Do you think you could persuade Gregory to sign if you had a chance to talk with him? I'm certain of it. You can't help us there. He drove us away last night with a shotgun. The West has a code that you may never have heard of. No true Westerner ever refuses the shelter of his roof to a man that's in danger. I don't understand. Ride out from town tonight, just as you did last night. When you get within half a mile of the ranch, you'll hear shots. Then head straight for the ranch house. Tato and I will follow you. And Gregory will think that you've been attacked by outlaws. You're sure that he'll let us in? Absolutely. It sounds good to me. You aren't doing this for charity, stranger. How much do you want? We'll talk of payment later. Start from town at 9 o'clock. hi Less than half a mile. It's dark. Maybe he missed us. There he is. Come on, get up, get up. Come on, get up. You've got a gun. Shoot it once or twice. No, I'm afraid the horse will get scared and throw me. There's the ranch house. We better stop here. Come on. The old man said he'd shoot us on sight. He'll hear those shots behind us. What's going on? Whoa, 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 whoa boy. Whoa, whoa, whoa there. Whoa, whoa. whoa. whoa, whoa. I warned you, pesky yes. varmints, and now I'm warned. No, no. Uh, save us, Gregory. There's a masked man and an Indian following us. Listen to those shots. There's the men down the road. They'll kill us. Get off my porch. You've got to give him protection, Pa. We didn't mean to come here, Mr. Gregory. We were just riding along the road and those bandits started shooting at us. Let us stay until it's safe. Then we'll go away. That's all we ask. They're a couple of tender feet. Let them come inside, Pa. They're oil men. And I took an oath that no oil man had ever stepped a th- foot through my front door. Can't you forget their oil men? We'll be killed if we leave here. You might just as well shoot us with that gun you got in your hand. I'd rather take it that way than in the back. They're telling the truth, Pa. If you send them away to be murder, they ain't hurt you none. They've hurt the whole state with their oil wells. You're hurting the state right now. You're going into partnership with bandits who aim to kill two innocent men. You can't do it, Stonewall. You may be stubborn, but you're honest and law-abiding. You've got to give him protection. Get inside. Oh, well, thanks, Mr. Gregory. You're saving our lives. Get in. I'll let you stay until morning. But if you start talking oil, I'll shoot you. I swear I will. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of tonight's Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. Bentley and Shane, two Easterners, offered Stonewall Gregory $10,000 for an oil lease on the north 100 acres of his ranch. But Gregory refused. Tonto informed the Lone Ranger that the two Easterners planned to swindle Gregory out of his property. 
But the masked man, knowing that it would be to Gregory's advantage to sell, offered his aid to the Easterners. He and Tonto pretended to attack Bentley and Shane, and the Gregories gave the Easterners shelter. Our second act opens the following morning. Bentley and Shane are having breakfast with Stonewall and his wife. You're a wonderful cook, Mrs. Gregory. Thanks, Mr. Bentley. Uh, Have some more biscuits. You too, Mr. Shane. I sure will. Do you figure that we can get back in town safely this morning, Mr. Gregory? You won't have no trouble. That outlaw won't be showing his face in broad daylight. I declare I'm almost glad he started shooting at you. It ain't often we meet folks from the East. You told some pretty tales about what's going on there. Mighty tall ones, if you ask me. Oh, hush, Pa. It's been a rare treat having you two gentlemen as our guests. I don't believe your husband agrees to that, ma'am. Of course he does, don't you, Pa? Well, ain't so bad when they don't talk about oil. We've kept our promise, haven't we? I reckon. You're welcome to come again under the same condition. No, Mr. Gregory. We'll be taking the train back east tonight. Our company sent us out here to do business with you. Now, look here. Don't worry. I'm not going to mention the subject again. But as long as we can't do business, there's nothing to keep us here. I guess we won't have any jobs when we get back to Pennsylvania. Why do you say that? Well, our boss told us that if we tried hard enough, we could get Mr. Gregory to sign. He won't believe us when we tell him how hard we tried. A lot your boss knows about Stonewall Gregory. That's my land. Your husband's perfectly right, Mrs. Gregory. I always say this is a free country and that a man's entitled to his own opinion. You're darn tootin' he is. It ain't fair that you should lose your jobs, though. You just tell them how you stood up and said your piece even when Pa had a gun pointed at you. Oh, they wouldn't believe us. Say, George, if Mr. Gregory were to write a letter stating his case, they'd have to believe us. Uh, I wouldn't do that. I ain't much of a hand at writing. Well, would you sign a letter if I wrote it? Sure he would, wouldn't you, Pa? Well, I... Oh, wouldn't hurt nothing, I suppose. I'd like to tell your company a few things so they wouldn't bother me no more. Do you have a pen and some paper, Mrs. Gregory? In the parlor. You come right along with me and I'll find you a real nice place to run. We'll wait here, Tonto. These trees will hide us from the house. Hunt will not like help, Crook. We've only helped Stonewall so far. Bentley and Shane won't leave until they have his signature. After that, we can make sure they don't cheat him. Crook's horses in corral. And I see them, Tonto. We'll wait here until they leave. <laughs> white fellow back in the woods a ways. They may be seen. Mm. Silver, white fellow. Mr. Bentley. I'm going to leave one with you. Whatever for? Just so you'll have a record of it. You mean we gotta keep it? That's what a businessman would do. Well, I declare. That sure proves Stonewall ain't no businessman. I'll just sign them now and, uh... Thought you wanted Paul to sign. I do. But this is more of a statement than a letter. Will you ask your husband to step in? Stonewall, come here. <laughs> I only need your signature. Didn't take you long, Bentley. What's the letter say? Do you want to read it? I ain't got my specs. You read it. All right. <clears throat> this is to certify that your Mr. Bentley did his best to get me to sign the following agreement. Receive payment of $10,000, for which consideration I deed my oil rights in the North 100 acres of land registered as the Box G Ranch to the Meredith Oil Company. The Meredith Oil Company will have the right to drill such wells as are necessary. Never and... mind all that. I wouldn't let them start drilling on my land for $50,000. Then just sign here, Mr. Gregory. Uh, here? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now, uh, now this one. Well, why two papers? This one so we'll have a record, Paul. Oh. Yeah. I, uh, I wonder if you'll sign too, Mrs. Gregory. Me? If we have both your names, it will make things a lot easier for us. Uh, here's the pen. Thanks. I used to write a real pretty hand. Uh, but the rheumatism sort of cramps my hand now, and uh, there. Ah, that's fine. Thank you, Mrs. Gregory. You and your husband have saved our jobs as well as our lives. We're grateful. Land sakes, it's the least we could do. 
Uh, are you going now? Oh, we'll have to. Still going to take the train tonight? Yes, sir. Uh, don't bother about our horses, Mr. Gregory. We can get them. Oh, they're hitched right outside. I told one of the boys to bring them up. And goodbye, Mr. Bentley. Goodbye, ma'am. It's been a pleasure knowing both you and your husband. Come on, George. Uh, goodbye. If you have any trouble with your boss, just let me know. We're all fixed up now. Uh, goodbye. Uh, there goes ten thousand dollars, Stonewall. Sometimes I think you're the stubbornest man in the world. Well, I ain't having no oil drilling on my land. You sure sell that. Mr. Bentley was awful nice, though. I felt sorry for him. He got around you by saying he was a good cook. He got around you by listening to your horse talk. Well, it's a lot better than oil talk. Well, they've gone. That's all there is to it. What are you going to do with this paper he left? Don't know if there's anything to do with it. Paul! A masked man. I'll take that paper, Mrs. Gregory. What do you want with it? I want to read it. Paul! You'd better give it to him. Oh, here. You'll get it back before long. Where's my gun? Let me at him. It must be the same outlaw that shot at Mr. Bentley. Open the door, Marthy. Oh, oh, get him, Paul. Oh, why don't you shoot? He called his horse Silver. Silver? Yeah. What do you suppose he's doing here? <laughs> He is a crook. He swindled Stonewall. How oh, him do that? I'll show you. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, oh. This is the paper I took from him. If the first two lines were torn off, it would be a legal lease. That's exactly what Bentley will do with his copy. Oh. He has Stonewall's signature witnessed by his wife. Before long, men and equipment will arrive to drill for oil. Then Stonewall make trouble. It won't do him any good. Bentley used a different handwriting for the first two lines, and he can claim that Stonewall inserted them afterward. I expected some such trick. Mm, that's right. But you want Stonewall sign lease. But that isn't what I meant when I said that Stonewall had been swindled. Bentley will claim that he paid Stonewall $10,000. This paper says received payment, and Stonewall signed it. What we do? Bentley and Shane were sent here by their company with the money to buy the lease. They probably have it hidden someplace in their room at the hotel. We go there? Not until it gets dark. Maybe crooks leave town today. No, Kimosabe. They'll take the train. That isn't due until midnight. We'll circle back to camp and wait there. Come on, Silver. Get him up right there. Bentley and Shane were confident that their plan had succeeded. That evening, the two men were in their room at the hotel, making final preparations to leave town. Finished packing, George? You want me to put the money in here? No, I'll take care of it. Bring the candle over. <laughs> what are you doing with the lease? It isn't a lease yet. I'm tearing off the top lines. Nice and even. <laughs> now... We have both a lease and a receipt. And $5,000 apiece. <laughs> not bad, George. Not bad at all. <laughs> I'll see who that is. Uh -huh. It's the mask man. Yes. I hear that you're leaving town. We aren't trying to run out on you. Come in. How much do we owe you for the job last night? I want $10,000. What's that? You're crazy. I'll give you $50. Hand and... me that money, Bell Shane. Now listen, stranger. I'll make it a hundred, but you Put can't... Put up your hands, Bentley, and step back from the table. He's got his cupboard. Ten thousand dollars is my price, and I'm collecting it. If you set a posse on my trail, it'll mean your lives. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, boy. I'm coming in, Stonewall. Who is it, Paul? Oh, oh land sakes. Oh, what do you want with us now? Here's the paper I took from you. I'm going to show you what Bentley did with his copy. You're tearing it. Now, read it. Both of you. Received payment. Why, this makes it all different. The dirty double crossing oily varmints. Bentley and Shane tricked you into signing a lease and a receipt, Stonewall. They can't get away with it. Yes, they can. And it's to your advantage. 
That north hundred acres is worthless for raising stock. It's oil land. You're standing in the way of progress by holding on to it. Stranger, it practically says here we got the money. We didn't. They didn't pay us nothing. Here's your money. Count it, Stonewall. You'll need it before the winter's over. Oh, glory be. Ten thousand dollars. I had to take this money from Bentley and Shane by force. And I tried to swindle you. But you can still turn the tables on them. Just tell me how. They don't realize that you suspect anything. They'll go to the sheriff with a story that I robbed them. Get into town as fast as you can and tell the sheriff your side of it. Bentley and Shane need a taste of Texas justice. Call down to the bunkhouse, Marthy. Tell Slim to saddle Blaze. All right. I'm on my way, stranger. Texas justice is just what them ornery critters is going to get. But he took $10,000 from it. You've got to do something, Sheriff. Can't you round up a posse and start after him? Give me a description. He's tall and he's masked. And he rides a white horse. Calls him Silver. Silver? So you caught me, ornery thieves. Good work, Joe. Gregory. What are you talking about, Stonewall? I'm talking about these two mavericks. They tried to rob me. Let's get out of here, George. Stay where you are. I got you covered. Same here. Go on, Stonewall. What's the charge? I gave him an oil lease on my North 100. They were supposed to pay me $10,000. But instead, they figured on keeping it for themselves. They'd have got away with it, too, if a friend of mine hadn't stopped them. That friend of yours don't happen to ride a horse named Silver, does he? He sure does. That's enough for me. You two are going to jail. By the time you get out, you know that it don't pay to meddle with the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Come on, Silver, old boy! There's adventure on the trail ahead! Hello, The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>